Hey everybody, welcome back to Money Vikings. Greg here, and I wanna have a really good overview today of five main steps to financial freedom. So these are the things, these are the essentials that I think someone has got to get down in order to work themselves into a situation of financial freedom. So let's first go step by step and let's talk about this. First of all, let's talk about financial freedom, what it means to you, what it means to people in general, and let's try to define it. So before I get into that though, please like and subscribe, would appreciate it as we grow the channel, if you get some value out of this, and I hope you do. So in my opinion, financial freedom is the ability to have your investments and passive income pay for your life in general, at least some baseline. Now, it, it's not necessarily, in my opinion, the ability to do whatever we want. That's a little bit of a fantasy, and that is kind of something reserved for like billionaires. That's kind of like the Jeff Bezos of the world where, you know, they're billionaires and yes, they can pretty much just, you know, sail around the world in a yacht and fly wherever they want. There's not many people out there that can do that. But there are many people, you know, of modest means or of, you know, the middle class that over time are able to build financial freedom. And what I mean by that is that they have a certain sense of stability and they're able to basically self-fund their life through their investments. So that's what I'm going to talk about when I talk about financial freedom. If you can go beyond that, that's awesome. But that's what I'm going to talk about. The second thing I want to mention is that I still think a million dollars in investable assets is a critical goal and a critical milestone. And there's a lot of arguments out there that that's not enough anymore million dollars isn't what it used to be. Yeah, that's true in a lot of ways, but in a lot of ways, it's also not true. Many people that have a million dollars in investable assets, if they have something like that, they can count on some social security at some point in their life and some subsidized healthcare. They may have a home paid off and maybe even they have a small pension of some kind, or even maybe they just work part-time, whatever it might be. That's a pretty comfortable life. And there is an ability if a person lives modestly to live financially free for a very long time on that amount. So that's kind of, you know, where I'm at with that. But let's go with the five big basic essentials to financial freedom, if that is a goal of yours. So the first one is a budget. This is something I have recommitted to recently, and I am now more aware than ever of how critical it is. In my earlier years of investing, and building wealth, I think I would have gone a little more loose with the budget. And as long as I was putting some money into assets every month and I was investing every month, I wouldn't really worry about it too much. But I think as time goes on, as you grow a family, as you prepare for retirement, as you do all these things, I think that a budget is a critical, critical thing, especially if you are on a path to financial freedom. The reason is quite simple. In the beginning years, your income is your greatest source of wealth building because you have to find a way to live beneath your means, as beneath your means as possible, not over your means or at them, but beneath them because you wanna take that extra and get that into investable assets, okay? That's why a budget is so key. So that's number one. I'm a big fan of simple budgets. It's basically a list of all your liabilities, all the things that you have to pay for every month and all of the income coming in, okay? You want that to be a delta, and you want to be bringing more income in, and you want a lot of that to be going into investable assets, okay? So that is number one. The second thing I will talk about is automation. So I talk about it a lot, but I gotta, gotta say it again. We need to be our own best friend. We have to be in our own court in terms of building wealth and automating saves ourselves from ourselves. So the classic story is when the, this is like as old as ancient Greece. Okay. Odysseus was going to travel through the seas past the sirens and he knew that he would not be able to withstand the siren call, but he did want to hear the sirens, right? He kind of wanted his cake and to eat it too. So he wanted to hear them, but he knew he would succumb to their 
uh, lore and he would die. He'd be killed by the monsters beneath. Okay. His men put wax in their ears to set them up for success. And he told his men to lash him to basically uh, tie him to the mast. Okay. So that way he could not come free and go towards the sirens. I see a very similar analogy when it comes to investing. We have to tie ourselves up in a way by tying up our investments into automation so that every month there's an you know automatic amount going to 401k, automatic going into savings, automatic maybe going into a brokerage account, automatically going into a real estate crowdfunding source, whatever it might be. So, but automation is critical. So that is number two when you're talking about the five steps to financial freedom. Number three, you have really got to get a understanding at your core of what an asset is and what a liability is, okay? So if you don't understand that at a fundamental level that becomes really a part of your ethos and it becomes part of your driving force, you're just not going to get there. Assets are things that grow in value in time and they put money in your pocket. Maybe every year, maybe every month, whatever it might be. These are investments, stock investments, bonds, real estate, businesses, whatever it might be, side gigs. Okay, those are assets. Liabilities are things that are just going to suck you dry. They're going to take money out of your pocket. So you have to have a sense throughout your whole journey towards financial freedom of what these two things are. Because when you're allocating your money into the ways that you want to allocate it, you really have to have in your mind, what am I doing right now? Am I putting money into an asset or am I putting money into a liability? Okay, so that I would say is number three. Um, my number four is having housing that is either under control in terms of the payment. So that's usually a fixed mortgage over a long period of time or housing that's paid off. Because I'm really finding it hard in this world and in the state of affairs to get to financial freedom without having a house that's paid off. So I would make that, if financial freedom is a goal of yours, I would make getting your house paid off as soon as possible a key goal. Or the other part of it, there are some financial experts that will tell you, don't worry about paying off your house, You know, it's a tax deduction, blah, blah, blah. That number has to be fixed, so a fixed rate mortgage, and it has to be moderate. It has to be affordable to you, really affordable to you. There's so many other costs that come with housing that people don't realize. There's taxes, there's insurance, and there's maintenance. And don't underestimate any of those because they're huge costs. Um, there's also utilities, but you'll pay that anyway. So having that down is a critical, critical step to financial freedom. And... The fifth thing I will say is this, you to, to get to financial freedom, you have to be educating yourself on investment vehicles because we have done the math and it's very hard to save your way to financial freedom. You need the tailwinds and you need the power of compounding over years and decades in order to get that critical mass to get to financial freedom, okay? So because... Simple story is exactly what a lot of us are dealing with right now. Inflation. Inflation has been really out of control. Apparently it's coming down now, but we've just seen gas prices spike again. And so I would just say that at the end of the day, you need to really understand risk management and investing, dividends, all that kind of stuff. Know your risk tolerance. Know, you know what kind of investment vehicles you're going into. Know that the expenses are low. Get all those things right. And, you know, you'll be in good shape. Just remember that, you know, money in a cash account, yes, it's not you're, not, you're not risking it through investments, but at the same time, you're risking it through inflation. So that's a big argument against holding too much cash because, again, $100,000 in a year from now will be worth 6 7% less and on and on and on for decades. And so it's just critical that that money is working for you. So I'd say that's the fifth big one right there. So those are my five, my top five to financial freedom. Hope you enjoyed this and we'll see you all on the next one. Thanks a lot for joining me.